Hey everybody, Jesse here for 3 Prong Gaming, and in today's episode, we are going to continue uh, checking for bad placement. In particular, we're going to be kind of doing a somewhat calculation slope. I'll explain that as we go along, but uh, yeah, stick around and check it out. Alright, in the last episode, we did our overlap protection um, where you can no longer place a mesh on top of another mesh and we made some uh, uh, instanced materials so it will automatically change the color of the uh, building you're trying to place if it's overlapping something. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that out. So yeah, let's. Uh, we're pretty much going to be working in the ghost building today. One thing I want to mention is, even though uh, you're seeing this probably a couple days later after I record it, um, at the day of recording today, I hit 200 subscribers. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, the support for this series has been uh, very positive, and I appreciate everybody's enthusiasm and support for this, and hopefully we can only get bigger and better from here. All right. So with that, like I said, we're going to be working in the ghost building today. Um, it's going to be a calculation slope of sorts. I've took the actual slope calculation out of it um, because I ran into some issues uh, when I actually changed the size of my mesh when I was playing with my AI. I was trying to figure out the scale of my world. And, and uh, yeah, it was placing a building according to the calculations of the slope that I had in there but it made it pretty difficult for the AI to get to it if they could get to it at all. So um, I changed it up a little bit. If at any point you guys wanna see how I calculate the slope, pretty much the process is the same. A little bit of the math is gonna be different, um, but the calculations, pretty much everything we do today will be set up to be able to calculate the slope. Like I said, we'll just have to add a little bit different math. But if you guys wanna see that, just let me know. But what we have is somewhat of a calculation slope but not quite. All right. So first things first, we're going to need a, another variable. Imagine that. Let's go ahead and call this one extent and make it of type vector. Okay. Calculate or uh, compile it and save it. Then up here on, oh, where is that? That is on spawn. Yep. On spawn right here. All right. Yep. On spawn ghost. Uh, go ahead and drag this out. We need to get our mesh, our ghost building mesh. Drop that in here and then drag out. We need to get component, component bounds. That's the one we need right there. Uh, not local bounds, get component bounds. Drop that in there. And then off this extent, we will need to, yeah, I'm going to have to change the size of this, I suppose, huh? We're going to need to set our extent. Go ahead and I'll drag that in, set it, and we will set it to the box extent here. If you're unsure what extent is, what it does is it takes the mesh and it gives you the distance from the origin point to um, the edge of the volume that you're checking. So the edge of our mesh in this instance is giving you, uh, you know, pretty much the half height of the at least the x and y the z won't necessarily be a half height so that's one of the reasons why it's important there's many reasons why it's important but that's one of the reasons why it's important to um, make sure your origin points are centered on your meshes because um, it's just going to make it easier for things like this for doing a lot of our calculations um, not just in what i do but just any project you do try to try to always make sure make sure you're um, origin points are centered on the bottom, obviously not in the Z because then most of your mesh will dive down below the uh, down below the uh, landscape. All right, so now we've got that. Uh, let's see, we need to create some new functions here. Let's create this one. This we will call calculate, did I spell that right? Calculate slope. And like I said, even though we're not necessarily calculating the slope, I'm still naming it that because ultimately that's what we're doing. Um, it's just not the mathematical slope. All right. In our calculate slope, what we need to do is we need to create, let's see here, we need a sequence. Hold S and click. Put that in. And we'll need actually an extra pin on this. We'll worry about that in a minute. We're going to need another sequence up here. So drag the zero into that 
And this one will actually need five pins, so go ahead and add three more. All right, create some space. Um, this is gonna be, there's, there's quite a bit going on in here. Uh, most of it can be copy and pasted, um, even though actually I probably won't really copy and paste it, but um, it's mostly gonna look the same, and I'll explain it as we get into it here. All right, now we need to create another vector, or another uh, uh, function. Um, this is going to make doing these calculations a whole lot. Oops, I did variable. I didn't want variable. Uh, let's see, another function. There it is. And we will call this one get vectors. So what we need here is we need to get actor location. We need to get actor rotation. Then off this rotation, we need to uh, get forward vector. And we need one more off of the rotation, which is get right vector. Okay, so we need to know uh, the rotation and location pretty much of our blueprint. All right, that's gonna help us figure out the uh, vectors um, for our calculations, we're gonna have to run some traces. So we need these numbers here. And then just hook up a return node. And we need three outputs. One, uh, we'll go ahead and just change this to a vector so they all go to a vector. Um, first one, we will call actor location. Second one will be forward vector. And the third one will be right vector okay and then just go ahead and plug these in to where they belong actor forward and right there it is and then just drag this in and there we go that function is done uh, yeah I know sequence that's fine um, save it go ahead we can close out the get vector and then back here now we can go ahead and take our get vectors function drop it in here and oops let's go ahead and double click that let's go ahead and just make this a pure function save it compile it we're gonna get that stupid error again but that's fine all right so from this what we need to do is drag off of our forward vector and we need to add it vector plus vector to the right vector all right, and then take our extent that we have right here, drop that in, get it. And I'll explain how this is all working in just a second. Multiply vector times vector. We need to multiply it by our extent. Okay, and now we need to take this multiplication and we need to add it to our actor location plus vector plus vector. and then just add those values together there. Okay, so ultimately what we're doing is we're getting, what we wanna do with this is, um, we're gonna end up running a box trace and we need to find the corners, each corner of our mesh from the, the center, from the extent. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check those corners. If any of those corners are over a particular value, that means your mesh is sitting on an uneven plane. And we don't want to do that. Like I said, that's going to cause problems for your AI. Um, so there's going to have to be, and, and some of these numbers we put in here for checking, they're just going to have to be, once you start actually getting your real meshes that you're going to use for the game and, and uh, start building your level, you're going to have to probably adjust some of these. But for our testing purposes, we'll get it all set up and, and you can come back and change the variables a little bit later. It won't be that big of a deal to change that. Okay. So we need to, okay, we need to create another function here. Let's go ahead and call this one um, slope trace. Okay. Now in this, we need an input. We will make it of a vector. Let me see, sorry about that. Um, we need to make this, we'll call this one trace location uh, type vector. Okay. 
and we will not make this a pure function. We'll leave this as an executable because we're going to have to run a trace in here as well. So we take our trace location. All right, now we need to add vector plus vector. And in, just in the Z, this is for the trace. We need to go 1,000. All right, we want to check 1,000 units up uh, for our start trace. And then we come down here, drag off trace location again, hit minus vector minus vector. And then in the Z, again, do 1,000. Now, again, this is going to depend on the scale of your world. Um, I'm going to actually do mine. I'm going to try to do my world just so you know, uh, about 25% scale. So everything I'm going to do is going to try to be right around in there. Um, yeah, it'll look pretty good without having overly sized buildings and making the world, you know, uh, too large. Um, it should work out all right. Anyways, okay. Now we need a line trace, line trace by channel. Drop that in there. Go ahead and hug, hug, yeah, plug in the execution. Now this is the start trace and this is the end trace. And for the trace channel, let's go ahead and check landscape. Um, we don't need complex, ignore self. And yeah, that should work for that. Go ahead and right click. We need to get actor location. Okay, come out here, break the hit results. Now we need to take our impact Z, the impact um, numbers here off the impact point. What this is, like it says, location of the actual contact point of the tray shape with the surface of the hit object. So this will give you the actual point where the, the trace hits the ground, okay? Um, in location, it, it doesn't tell you um, how far it is it tells you where in the world it's almost like the uh, real world height of the world it's hitting and then we're taking we're going to take the actor location here and we're going to figure out what the difference is between those so the impact point just right click on the pin and split the struct okay same thing up here on the hit on the uh, get actor location split the struct because all we're going to care about is the z on this so we're taking the z height of the um, mesh that we have Okay, and then we're going to subtract it, subtract, float. We're going to subtract from the impact point. Like I said, this is the real world um, height, Z height of the trace. Okay, so this way, this will give us the difference in um, from where the mesh is to where the ground actually is. Okay, and then that's it for the trace. So let's add a return node. And what we want to return here, we need another output. We're going to return a float value, and we will call this difference. Okay, let's go ahead and, like I said, make it a float. And then just plug in the value there, and then let's make sure to hook up the execution pin. All right, compile it. We're going to get the error again, save it. Uh, now we shouldn't need the slope trace again or the get vectors. We can close those. Go ahead and drag in our calculate slope. Okay. Like I said, we don't need it as a, um, we don't want it as, because of all the execution that's going on there, we don't want it as a pure function. So go ahead and grab off the then zero. We're going to need quite a bit of space now. We'll eventually collapse these nodes, um, but for now, we'll just leave it like this. But it's going to get a little sloppy in here. So. Let's go ahead and just add some reroute nodes and we could probably move all this up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So from the, oops, not calculate slope. When I do, I grabbed the wrong one. We need the slope trace. Wow. Okay. Hook that back in there. And there we go. Now the trace location will be this. So like I said, we're getting the corners of everything. So it'll get the forward vector and the right vector, add them together, then it adds it to the actor location after multiplying it by the extent. And that will give you the, the positive, like, I don't know, we'll say the front left corner of the mesh. And we'll take this, we need another um, variable. We'll make this a local variable. We will call this differences. 
Um, we could probably call it slope differences, but differences is fine. We will make it a type float and we will make it an array, okay? So now we need to take our differences, just drag it in here as a get it, pull it out here and we will add to this, this number right here, okay? Simple as that. Now these next ones, they're ultimately gonna be the same. Like I said, we need to find the corner of each one. So we can just go like this. We grab another get vector. Now that I've already explained it, it should be able to speed this up a little bit. But now we need to multiply vector times vector. Um, excuse me, not vector times vector. We need to multiply, where's my asterisk? Vector times float, okay? And what we need to multiply it by is negative one. Okay, so we're taking the forward vector and we're gonna find the opposite side of the forward vector and then we need to um, add this. Go ahead and add vector plus vector to the right vector. Plug it in like so. And then the rest of this is going to be the same. We need to take our extent, drag it into here, get it. And then we need to multiply that value by our extent, just like we did above. And then we need to add our actor location vector plus vector with that new value. So it's finding with the negative one in here, it's finding the uh, n opposite corner of what we found right there. Okay, and the same thing right here, we'll take our slope trace, plug that in here, and then this will be plugged into there like so. Drag off of our then one pin, add a quick reroute note. I like the fact that they made that. You could double click the line to get it. All right, and then differences, get it, add, and plug in this new value. All right, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so now we're just gonna change these values around. So get vector again. Like I said, this is a little bit repetitive. You probably could copy and paste it, but um, you're still gonna have to unhook a lot of pins and do all that. So. With this one, now we're gonna take the right vector and we will multiply this by a float and this one will be negative one. And then we're gonna add it to our forward vector, vector plus vector, add those values together and then multiply that by our extent. Okay, and then just again, Add the location with this new figure right there and slope trace again pretty repetitive um, hopefully you guys are understanding this and you know as repetitive this is it as this part is I'm actually finding it difficult to find extra things to talk about but I will make do okay there we go again differences Add that right there and that right there. Oops. You can hear my dog drinking water in the background. That is pleasant. Hey, Sadie, stop. I don't care if you die of thirst. Viewers don't want to listen to you drink. All right. And then the next one. Now we'll take the get vectors. Not what the heck? Get vectors. Okay, now these ones, actually both of these will be multiplied by negative one. So let's go ahead and change this value to negative one. And then we will uh, control W, add the right vector, and then add both of these together. Vector plus vector. Multiply it by our extent. and add it to our actor location, okay? And then these, actually I'll just control W these, make it a little bit quicker. Plug that in and then the den three. All right, coming up to the last one here. I know we're about 20 minutes in right now. So uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get all this in. Hopefully I can get all this in in a reasonable time. So the last one now, we actually don't want to 
do any math. So this one will be easy. Go ahead and get our vector right here. Get this in. All we need is the actor location. So let's get the uh, slope trace. We will control W that. Actor location is the only one we need off of this. This will essentially give us where the um, origin pin is, which should be the center of your mesh. So we got five points of contact in here uh, to check and add into this differences. Perfect, that's what we need. Okay, so now we come back down here. Let's go ahead and slide this down a little bit. Okay, and in this one, we need an extra pin here. So let's just add that now. We need to run a branch. Okay, and what we need to check on this branch is we need to get our difference, get it in here. Now we need to get, um, actually we'll just type uh, min of float array. We need the minimum value found in this float, okay? We want the lowest number. And then we drag off of this and now we need the max of the float array. So all we care about is the minimum number and the maximum number that are found in those traces up above. All right, first we need to check to see even if we've got an index of these. So drag off of this, do a greater than integer. We'll make it greater than negative one. If it's negative one then um, or zero, then there is not an index in here. So control W, we'll check both of these, make sure that we got a value here. Okay. Oops. Grab these, move these up. All right, so then just drag off this, type and, plug these in. So both of these have to have a value for us to run the trace. Okay, so just plug that into the branch there. All right, now while we have these numbers here, um, do we wanna set up that math yet? Uh, no, let's go ahead and we'll come back to this. We're gonna have to do something with these values in a minute. Um, but what we need to do now is if the, if that condition is true, let's run a box oops box trace by channel. Okay, again, let's go ahead and make the trace channel landscape. We need to get vectors. All we need is the actor location. Let's so drag off that. Hit plus vector plus uh, vector. On the Z, again, we'll make this 1,000 and drag off again, minus vector, minus vector, do the Z at a, another 1,000, and then this will be our start, and this will be the end. Um, I know this looks the same to the other trace to the function we just made, but this is a box trace. The other one we did a line trace, so we can't use that uh, slope. Um, trace that we created just a little bit ago. So now we take um, our extent because from the box trace, let's go ahead and get it. From the box trace, we need half heights here. So go ahead and, oops, and I plugged that into the wrong one. We need that as the end. Okay, go ahead and right click on the extent. Let's go ahead and split the struct. Same thing up here on the half size. Split the struct. All right, because all we need here is we need the X and the Y, we don't care much about the Z, so we're just gonna enter a value of one for the Z. All right, so this is just the half size, the box trace. Uh, we need to know the half size of the box that we're tracing, okay? So that's what that is doing right there. Off of that, we need to go ahead and break our hit results. Drag that out here, break hit results. And then we need to run another branch up here. Plug this in. Now we need to make sure that there was a return value. That's what we're checking right here. All right, so if there is a return value, then we want to set, what this is gonna do is we're setting, um, let's go ahead and set actor location. So this is gonna make sure that um, our mesh is gonna follow the contour of the landscape. So when we got hills and mountains, this is gonna run all that and set our mesh to the proper height, okay? That's all we're doing with this, but we need that. Let's go ahead and break apart the impact point again, right click, split struct, but we need that before we actually run our calculations on this because, well, if the mesh is still sitting at zero on the Z axis, 
then uh, well that's not any good so grab our get vectors again right click let's just open up the actor location so split the struct on that uh, new location split the struct on that from our get vectors we just want the X and the Y to be the same of our actor location but the Z will be the impact point Z okay so again this is all just uh, uh, this is off the truth so this is just setting our mesh to the correct height of the landscape okay and we're creeping up on time here 25 26 minutes okay so this is actually just about done we're just about here so then off of this pin let's just go ahead and add a return node we can ultimately that's all we need if you want to test it you can put some print strings in here to see exactly the calculations that are going on but on the return node we need an output of bad we'll call it bad location okay change it to type boolean all right so now off the min value here we need off of both of them actually go ahead and drag off type abs for absolute and then control w that and plug the max value into the absolute so what this is doing is if we've got any negative values it will make them uh, positive values because that's that's all we really need to do we just need to know if they're over a specific size so drag off of this and we need to do greater than float float all right same thing with this one control w and plug that one oops plug that into there now let's go ahead and make another local variable here i believe i made it local yeah let's make another local variable here we'll call this one um, max differences hit enter it does not need to be an array select that compile it and what I set for mine, um, like I said, th this value is probably going to have to change once we um, really start getting our meshes into the game and start moving it around and do some level design. But ultimately, for testing purposes, I set this value to 20. So that 20 is obviously in centimeters. Okay, so um, if any of the edges of the mesh is 20 centimeters higher than the other, um, or away from the landscape below it, you cannot, will not be able to place the mesh. All right, so drag off of this, type or, we need the or boolean. So if either of these are, drag our max difference in, get it. And by setting in a variable here, it's gonna be easier to just um, change it. You don't have to come back and change both of these and know exactly where max difference is, is what we'll set, okay? So we don't need to run a branch here. We just need to go like this. If either of these are true, it'll return true. If either of them, if um, they're false, it'll return false. All right. So that's all we got to do for that. And that is it. Like I said, that there's other math you could do in here to do the calculation of the slope and to actually figure out like a degree of the slope. And um, that's fine. We could do that if you really want to, uh, but. I found it uh, very unhelpful, at least for the scale I was using. If you had a small mountain and a bigger mesh and you try to put the mesh over the small mountain, it would actually place it, but all four corners were of equal height. But the, I don't know. It was really, I didn't expect that result and it happened. So um, I had to come up with this new figure right here and it just makes it simple. It's almost the exact same thing. So as we're running out on time here at uh, 20, dang it, 29 minutes, Let's go back out here into the event graph. So now we need to um, make sure that on tick, we need to, let's see, I changed the thing in here too. On tick, where is it? Go ahead and close our find results and compile the results. All right. On our tick, um, change that. Nope, that's the same. So now what we need to do though is off this false, we need to now grab our calculate slope, drag that in here, plug the false into our calculate slope. All right, and then the set material will be bad location. Just plug that into is air. Let's hook up the material. 
All right, so if there is a bad location, so if it is not overlapping, it's going to come down here and see if there's a bad location. If there is, it'll set it as error. If not, it'll be false. Okay, and then this one just true. If there, if it is overlapping, we don't even need to run any of this down here. And then that is it for that. Let's jump into, let's compile it and save it. Let's jump into our camera pawn controller because now we need to make sure we can't uh, double click when we, uh, or that we can't drop the um, mesh into the world when we're overlapping because right now it's still only check if it's um, overlapping because of this right here so we've got check overlap is overlapping so let me double check this function here so yeah we're just checking we need to go real quick back into ghost we need to create just this is part of object oriented programming function let's do Call it git is overlapping. All right. So we take is overlapping, set it in here. We get it. Uh, the return. Let's just drag this out. Return. And then plug this into. No, but one minute. Let's plug it in here. Make an output and call it is overlapping. Hit enter. And then just plug this in. As simple as that. Uh, but yeah, we've talked about OOP before. So now go back to your camera pawn controller. We need to take this out of here and change it to our get overlap. Delete that. Come on. Delete that. Drag that in here. Uh, get is overlapping. And I didn't make that a pure function. Let's go in here and make this a pure function. Maybe. Pure function. I'm trying to rush this very end right here. Hit play. And we want to make sure that it is not overlapping. Okay. We can go ahead and compile this or collapse this to its own node. Right click, collapse nodes. We will just call it uh, verify as place place a place a bowl I spelled that wrong <laughs> place a, a a bowl boy I can spell there we go so now it's just gonna run that right there make sure it is placeable if it is then we can go ahead and lay it down so real fasting we're 30 almost 34 minutes into this what I've got to do um, sorry I know I, I told you guys I was gonna try to stick to 30 minutes for the most part I have but we need to do a little landscape work here real fast. Let's change the size brush. I'm not gonna talk about this too much. We just need to be able to test this. So we need to create some slopes. Um, sculpt tool, circle, smooth. Yeah, that's fine, I suppose, for now. Let's go ahead and slide this over a little bit. And let's just, whoops, let's just raise, create some varying angles here. Uh, move around, come on now. Move around the editor and now take our sculpt. We want to flatten. We're just going to flatten this down a little bit. And I'm still trying, I'm, I'm still used to moving around in the game where I'm trying to move with S and W. Okay. Oops. Just create some weird, just not massive, drastic slopes here. Um, smooth. Where's that smooth? We'll just kind of smooth this out a little bit, but we just want to create a couple varying checks here to make sure um, that this works. All right, so get off our landscape tool, uh, Control S. Let's save it. Yeah, external references. Uh, sometimes I don't get that; it it doesn't show that for me. All right, so play. So now I know if lighting needs to be rebuilt. Grab our apartment, and there you go. The slope is too high. So it won't place it right there, but it's not right there. So what I would suggest, because you'll see here that with that check we have, there's, you're still going to have some angles that are up. That's okay. What I suggest is when you make your meshes, you compensate for that. So if we've got, we've got a 20 centimeter check, so we're allowed to place anything under 20 centimeters. So make your mesh 25 centimeters 
below your origin point. So that way, when you set it on here, your mesh will actually go below the surface. It'll actually make it look like a footing going into the world. So maybe I'll do that as an example um, in a future episode when I do my meshes. Um, but yeah, see, so they're right there. We can't place it there, but right there we can. See, that's still kind of high, but that should be within our tolerances of 20 centimeters right there. So you could change that. I may lower it down to 10, um, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but for now, yeah, that's it. That that checks it out right there. Um, yeah, can't place, can't place. It's overlapping, not, not where we want to place it, so it's not letting us. Perfect. 36 and a half minutes into it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do me a favor. Go down and hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, yeah, 200 people can't be wrong, right? So even though only about uh, 40 of those have actually subscribed from the UE4 tutorials, but I expect that to grow because uh, of just all the response. So check out one of the other videos playing on the screen. And until next time, peace.